What's an 8-bit computer worth without video output? Approximately nothing. Let's dive deep into the process of generating composite video with off-the-shelf logic chips. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Get cool stuff, early access to videos, your name in the credits, or just support my museum. Become a patron today. Link in the description. The original United States television video standard is complicated and technical. To truly understand it requires mathematics, electronics, and even engineering backgrounds. I don't have any of those, and neither do most makers. So over the next few videos, I'm going to show you how to generate composite video with off-the-shelf logic chips. Before we begin, let's describe the composite video standard from a 10,000-foot view. Composite video is structured as 525 lines of video 30 times each second. This is divided into fields of 262.5 lines interlaced every 60th of a second. Embedded between lines are horizontal sync signals that tell the TV when lines end. And between fields are vertical sync signals that tell the TV when the fields end. The specification also calls for equalizing pulses and vertical serrations between fields to help the television maintain horizontal lock. The majority of the timing is centered on the color subcarrier frequency of 3.58 MHz, for technical reasons I won't go into. Now you may be wondering to yourself, why are we doing this when there are whole chips we can use to do all of this with much less work? That's a good question. The correct answer is to learn how it was done at the beginning of the personal computer revolution. Now that the boring part is over, let's have some fun and make some magic. Today we'll be constructing the horizontal timing portion of the circuit so that we can generate lines. Here's what you'll need for today's project. A 5 volt power supply. A 14.318180 MHz oscillator. One 74HC4040 binary ripple counter. Three 74LS30 8 input NAND chips. One 74LS10 tri unit 3 input NAND chip. One 74LS00 quad unit 2 input NAND chip. One 74LS04 hex inverter chip a solderless breadboard, and connecting wires. How do we generate an analog signal with digital logic? By doing what digital logic does best, it counts things. Since composite timing is based on the color burst frequency, it stands to reason that if we need to count something, it's going to be that clock. This clock counting concept is what opened up the entire world of composite generation for me. And I got the idea from Alan Alcorn's original Atari Pong from 1972 and the excellent paper written about its circuit analysis. Link in the description. The horizontal timing section consists of three signals. Horizontal reset, which is the master timing period of each line. Horizontal blank, a signal used by other parts of the circuit and horizontal sync, the pulse at the end of each line telling the TV where lines end. Let's start with horizontal reset, which we will call H-reset for brevity. First, we have to sort out the line length. According to the specification, each line is exactly 63.5 repeating microseconds long. We'll round that to 63.56. If we do the math and we put 3.58 megahertz into 63.56 microseconds, we get exactly 227.5. Counting halves in binary is weird, but if we double the clock to 7.16 MHz, the number becomes an integer, 455. Double it again to 14.31818 MHz, and we get 910. Why did we double it twice? Well, because 14.31818 MHz oscillators are everywhere. 7.16 MHz oscillators basically don't exist. Now, how do we count numbers with digital logic? Well, we use a ripple counter, in this case, the 74HC4040 12-bit binary counter. You can also use other smaller counters chained together. We feed the counter the 14 MHz clock and count the cycles in a way to give 910. Keeping in mind binary math, each output is a double of the previous, so we just add up the outputs, meaning 
512, 256, 128, 8, 4, and 2. Now how do I add those together with a circuit? Well, I use a NAND gate. A NAND outputs a zero signal if and only if all of its inputs are 1. The chip to use here is a 74LS30, an 8 input NAND. So when the counter equals 910, the NAND gives 0. I'll just tie the two extra inputs high so they're always true and they won't bother me. We will call this signal 910H. Now, in order for the counter to count, it needs a negative signal on the clear line. Bringing this signal positive resets the counter to zero. The NAND is negative when true. That means we need to pull 910H into an inverter, a 74LS04. Once we pull that into the 74LS04, we get our output, the final signal that we want, which is H reset. And finally, we tie H reset back into the counter. It's all very convoluted, but in the end, we're counting 910 over and over and over again. So let's build it. First, we start by getting the breadboard prepped. We do this by getting power connected to the breadboard. Then we connect the two sides of the breadboard together so that both sides of the bus have power. And next here, I'm just going to add an indicator LED so I can tell if the breadboard is powered up. Not necessary, really. We turn the power supply on, you can see it lights up, so I know that I, my uh, bus is set up and working correctly. Now we'll put the 14 megahertz clock crystal in. And then we'll hook it up to the positive and negative power buses so that we can get that clock to start oscillating. Now, just to make sure that the clock is oscillating, we're going to connect it up to the oscilloscope. And yeah, it looks like the clock is working perfectly fine. We have our 14.31818 megahertz signal. Next, we're going to be putting in the main timing circuit, which is going to consist of a 74HC4040 uh, counter. So we get that put in there. After the timer goes in the 74LS30 uh, 8 input NAND chip, so we just add up the outputs. That would be 512, 256, 128, 8, 4, and 2. So let's get those hooked up. So we start with 512, 128, 256. Actually, that one's 1, but I made a mistake there. I'll fix it in a minute, don't worry. That would be 4. And that's 8. So now we put in the 74LS04 chip. So we take the uh, output of the 74LS30 NAND, we take it into the inverter, we pull that output into the clear line of the 74HC4040 counter. Now we need to make the counter actually count, and we do this by pulling in the 14 megahertz clock into the clock line of the counter. Now, I forgot to pull the two extra inputs of the 74LS30 NAND chip high, so I'll go ahead and do that now. It's always good to pull your unused inputs either high or low, depending on your circuit's needs, so that you don't have these floating inputs that could go high or low randomly whenever and cause your circuit to malfunction. Now, let's go ahead and put the oscilloscope into that output that we uh, just created and take a look and see if the frequency is correct. While looking at it, I found that the frequency was incorrect, so I found where I made an error in putting that uh, wire in there. That shouldn't be on pin 9, that should be on pin 7. And now if we look at the oscilloscope, it looks good. Now that we have a good scope reading, we know that these outputs are correct, so let's go ahead and label them. The primary output from the 74LS30, I'm going to label 910H. Uh, which stands for 910 horizontal clock ticks. The inverted output of that we're going to call H reset because that's what it is. It resets the entire horizontal timing circuit to the correct timing so that it works properly. Next, we have to generate horizontal blank. Horizontal blank, or H blank for short, is a period at the beginning of the line where no active video is allowed. 
According to spec, this blanking period is 10.9 microseconds long to give time for the electron beam to physically swing back to the left of the screen. Electrons have inertia. Go figure. If we do the math, one H clock is 69.84 nanoseconds long. That fits into 10.9 about 156 times. So we need to count from 0 until 155. That's 128, 16, 8, 2, and 1. But how do we trigger something to start and stop at specific times? Well, we use what's called a set reset flip-flop, or SR for short. This has two inputs, set and reset, and two outputs complementary of each other. When you trigger set, it turns the flip-flop on. Trigger reset, and it turns it off. If it's already set, setting it again doesn't do anything, and likewise for reset. The cheapest and easiest way to make an SR flip-flop is with the 74LS00 NAND that has two gates cross-circuited. The set condition is easy. It's not H reset. But we have to make the reset condition. This is 155 as we've already decided. We pull 128, 16, 8, 2, and 1 into another 74LS30. That output goes into reset of our SR and the SR's outputs are H-blank and not H-blank, both of which we'll be using. So let's build it. So we get the 74LS30 put in there, and then the 74LS00. So we'll get the SR flip-flop set up by cross-connecting the two NAND circuits. Now we hook up the set condition to 910H. Now we need to create the reset condition. So we pull in 128, 16, 8, 2, and 1. Now that we've created the reset condition, we tie that into the reset input of the SR flip-flop. Now if we look at the oscilloscope, it looks good. Now we have to generate horizontal sync. Horizontal sync, or H-sync for short, is a signal that is at the beginning or the end of the line that tells the TV where the beginning or the end of the line is, depending on how you look at it. This starts at 1.5 microseconds, plus or minus a tenth of a microsecond, into the line, and runs for 4.7 microseconds, again, plus or minus a tenth of a microsecond, from the start of the pulse meaning 6.2 microseconds, into the line. This signal is the second most critical behind H reset, so we want this to be as precise as feasible. Doing the math, we find that 22 is the best start, at 1.537 microseconds, and 88 is the best stop, at 6.146 microseconds, giving a pulse of 4.609 microseconds. That's a good compromise between close enough and a smaller set of selection conditions. To make 22, we have to use some care, because we don't want it to fire again after the reset condition. So we start with 16, plus 4, plus 2, and we also pull in H blank, so it doesn't run after H blank. Then we invert 64 and 128, so that it won't fire again when those bits are also 1, which would be after the reset condition, but before H blank. To get 88, we pass 64, 16, and 8, into a 74LS10 3-put NAND. As long as it always fires after 22, and 22 never fires again, the 88 can do whatever it wants. These set and reset conditions are passed into another 74LS00 SR flip-flop to generate H-Sync. With this done, we have a circuit that generates composite-compatible line timing. So let's build it. So we install the 74LS30 and the 74LS10 chip. Now we'll set up the SR flip-flop. Now that that's ready, we'll put together 22H. So we plug in 16, 4, and 2, and then we bring in H blank. And now we'll invert 64 and 128 using the inverter we already installed. So we pull 128 into the inverter, and 16 into the inverter.
and then we take the inverted signals into the 74LS30. Next, we have to do 88H. To do that, we give it 64, 16, and 8 into the 74LS10 3 input NAND. So that's 64, 16, and 8. Now we pull our set condition into the flip flop, and then we pull our reset condition into the flip flop. And with that, we have horizontal sync. Now if we look at the oscilloscope, it looks good. We've made our first big step into generating composite video. The next step is generating vertical timing, but that's in the next video. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on my latest adventures. If you like my channel, head on over to Patreon and drop a dollar in the cup. Link in the description. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need.